let's get started. Uh, you should have downloaded logo sheet number three. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, open up Illustrator 2020 and create a nine by nine document. Now, since that's the last thing I've done here, I can just select it here, double click and my nine inch by nine inch document. Command R brings the rulers on so you can kind of see that it is in fact nine by nine inches. And we're going to go to our layers palette and I will then go to file, uh, place, find the logo sheet number three and just place it in our artboard and get it all centered nicely. And then we're going to go to our properties palette and with the, the um, logo selected, we're going to drag the opacity down to about 50%. Uh, then go back to our layers uh, palette and then we're going to go ahead and lock this layer and create a new layer uh, and this is the layer number two that we'll be designing on. So let's go back to our properties pa palette and let's zoom in command plus plus and pan to the upper left hand corner and we're going to start with this um, object right here. Uh, as you can see it's pretty much a bunch of concentric circles uh, but in order for us to make these all uh, identical we're just going to start with the first one. There's a lot of different ways to do this but we're going to use the um, object path offset path. Uh, just so you guys can learn how to use that. So we'll start with a circle. I'm holding the shift key down and the space bar and I'm just going to start uh, the inner circle here. I'm going to make the fill clear so that and the stroke should be black. You can kind of see that here. And now with the selection tool selected and this selected, I'm going to go to object, path, offset path. And you can see just by me doing that, I had the path selected and what's going to do, it's going to give me a new path that's offset from this path by 1.389 inches. Uh, just looking at this, maybe I'm going to try something like six. See how that looks. Maybe that's a little too big. So I'm going to try something like four. It looks almost where I need it to be. So 3.7. Point three seven, sorry. And it looks like 0.37 inches is what we're going to do. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to offset this path because it's selected one more time. Path, uh, uh, offset path. And this time we're going to go down to 0.1. And see what that looks like. Preview is on, otherwise we wouldn't be seeing anything. And that's about twice as big as we need it, so 0.5. And that looks perfect. So that's going to be our path. And so now we've got these three circles. Uh, we can actually use them. I'm going to copy these, holding the shift key down. And you can kind of see that's. I'm also holding the option key down so that it makes a duplicate. And then finally, we're going to select this these two. So I'm holding the shift key and just selecting the inside and the donut shape. And then I'm going to move that to the middle. I'm holding the shift to select both and we're just going to move it to the middle right about there. It kind of wants to snap and we're going to let go. And now we've got our paths that we can now use to uh, get rid of things. It looks like I forgot to hold the option key down. Notice how um, this one is missing. That's because I didn't duplicate it. So I'm going to undo that holding the option key down and then moving it and letting go with the option key still held down makes a duplicate. And we've done this before. I'm going to select them all. Um, use our um, path tool and I'm just going to select the things that we want to have be part of this design. I don't want these out one, outside ones. And I did, did want this, did not want this, did not want that not want that. Oh, it looks like I did want this one. So I'm going to undo that. So I'm just going to go across here and zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Don't want that. So holding the option key down, don't want that part. Uh, and I do want this. Uh, don't want this. And let's see what we've got. I'm going to use this as a selection and then flip it around. Oop, forgot a couple things. I'm just going to hold the option key down for this guy, this guy, and oops, let's just zoom in to make sure we can see it. That guy is gone and that, oops, and that guy is gone. 
Okay, and so there is our design. And you can see it's still two pieces, so if we select it, we still have to remember to group this because it's in two pieces. Command G to group, and there is our design. Now, why did we use the offset path tool? Well, sometimes it's useful for more complicated shapes. Obviously, with a circle, we didn't need to worry about it too much, but say, for instance, we have like the letter F here, right? And we're going to just select this letter F and going to zoom in so you can see it and create and um, make this into a shape, right? And now you can see that this letter F has a bunch of anchor points. It's curved. It's more complex. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So if we were to use the offset path tool for this, you'll see that it'll allow us to make a, a perfectly smooth outline of that shape. Um, in this case, it's offset by a five, and that would actually allow us to do something like interesting with beveling and those kinds of things, um, instead of trying to like recreate the shape with a pen tool. We could also use the negative uh, number in front, and that will actually make the shape on the inside that's based on the shape on the outside. So the offset path tool is really useful for a lot of different things, maybe for highlighting letters or creating like something that looks like it's beveled or those kinds of things. So you can create like a, uh, like in this case, we can create a something that looks a little bit like this. So you can use it to, to create this like drop shadow type feel. Um, so again, offset path tool, very useful, um, something to think about. Okay, so in this case, in this one, we're going to be using another uh, drop down um, effect from the distort transform uh, selection. And you can kind of see what we have here. We have like uh, something that looks like a star, but really it looks just like an eyeball shape that's kind of repeated. So we're going to actually start by just creating a line with our pen tool. So we're going to go here and then we're going to go to here. And we're going to hit the escape button at this point. And there's our line. We're going to put some stroke, uh, some, uh, a stroke on it. And obviously no fill is needed. And then we're going to use our width tool uh, to select uh, the width here. And then we're just going to expand it so that we have something that looks like this, right? And then we're just going to move this, oops, go back to our direct select. And I just want to move this anchor point here and this one here. There we go. So I'm going to turn this into an actual shape by going to Object, Expand Appearance. I don't need to simplify it. It looks pretty good. Um, but we are going to invert the shape itself. So I'm going to select a shape and swap the fill for the stroke. So here's our object. And then we're going to expand this one more time because we know that this is just a line, right? So go to Object, Expand, and Perfect. That looks like one of the shapes already done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, our effects distort transform uh, area, and we're going to go effects distort transform, and we're going to just click the um, transform. Now this is a pretty cool window, and I'll show you what this does. It allows us to make copies. So for instance, if we put six here. Um, and we change the angle to something like 30. You'll see it makes six copies at 30 degrees each, right? Um, how many copies do we need? I low. Well, let's count it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need eight copies. So we're going to need eight. But what is our um, degree that we have to use to make those eight copies work. Well, we can just use math 360 divided by eight. And oh, so it's not going all the way around. It's 360 divided by 180 divided by eight, since we're only going halfway around the circle. So let's try that. And that looks pretty correct we miscount should have been nine I think so let's try nine and let's do 180 divided by nine. Oh, that looks like the the right number so again because we only counted halfway around the circle and that's 180 and then nine copies is what we need and we hit okay so the way this kind of this tool works which is really cool and there's our final pro uh, object there uh, is that it just takes something 
like this, whatever it is. So I'm just going to make it so you can see it. Um, and distort, transform, transform. And when you make something like 10 copies of that, you'll notice nothing happens when you click anywhere else. What you need to do is actually move it. You can kind of see now I've just made 10 copies of it uh, moving uh, this much to the left, or I can move it to the right. Right? You can move it down or scale it, so make them smaller or a little bigger. So something like this can be useful if you're trying to create something like a shell or something because you want to scale it to be bigger. You want it to be moving um, a certain amount. You can just change the vertical amount if you wanted to to offset it. So you can kind of get the idea how this works. Right? And now all of a sudden you've got this interesting thing going on here. All right. So, and these are all separate paths uh, once you've expanded this. So take a look, if I move this around, it's only the single element here. And that's because the transform and the properties panel is we can actually change this after the fact. So if we don't like what we've done, we can still modify it. So this might be my uh, shell element, right? Once we're really, really happy with the way that this tool works, you notice here or here, and we've got everything we want, um, correct like maybe that's my shell um, we can go up to object expand appearance and now it makes them all into actual uh, curves that we can use right and then finally if we really want to finish this off we'll go to object expand one more time hit OK and then we'll use our path tool to take all these guys and bring them all together which might take a little bit of work. And again, we could always go to the window pathfinder like we did in class, um, wherever it has gone, here it is. And then, okay, I'm just gonna see if I can grab it. There it is. And then click on this icon. And what that does is it uh, turns everything into a solid. So again, the window pathfinder uh, is usable for something like this. And there's a single solid object, as you can kind of see. So here, what I would do is, if I'm happy with this and I don't want to thicken these up a little bit using the stroke tool, I could then go to Object Expand Appearance, now and then finally Object Expand, and then using my Pathfinder here, click this button, and now these are all solid shapes. Okay, hopefully this is helping a little bit. Let's take a look at this next element or this next tool. Uh, we're gonna just use the curve pen tool to make one of these and then we're gonna rotate it and place them uh, as we see here. It looks like the same thing four times. So curve pen tool, we've used this before. We're just gonna click, 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 click. And we're gonna make our way around this curve until we get to the end here. And then we're just gonna hit escape going to swap this into a stroke. Now this stroke, we know that we could use uh, the width tool to make this stroke uh, wider or smaller. So I'm just going to use the width tool for the middle here. At the ends, I'm going to zoom in so you can see, I'm just going to take that width tool and expand it. I'm going to drag this point like down a little bit because it looks like it gets thinner here. Uh, looks like it gets thinner here as well, right? And then finally, we're gonna increase the size here. I'm gonna zoom in and see what's going on here. Looks like there was, all I have to do is drag these out. Great. And if needed, if I wanted to scooch this over because this list doesn't look like it's like correctly center, I could use my direct selection tool and just select once and then I can obviously move this guy. So we've got our first uh, curve. Only last thing we need to do is put these end caps on. We know that that's available in the stroke palette, uh, which is right here. And we can just add an end cap to both of these. And now we've got our first element. Uh, let's go ahead and expand that. So object, uh, expand appearance. And now we've got like all these strokes. Now, Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're going to zoom out. Let's do this again two more times. So the pen tool, start right around here, go here, and then find our way to the middle of this guy. 
that's good enough. Hit escape, and I'm going to swap this out. Escape. I'm going to just go ahead and do that for this guy as well. I'm just going to start here, 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 clicking a little bit. Now, being careful not to click on the path, because if I do this, look what happens. It selects the path. It stops my previous thing. So I'm going to just kind of go through the path, and then I'm going to hit escape. So the same thing as before. Go to our selection tool, and then the width tool. We're going to uh, increase the width here, right? And decrease the width here, and increase the width here until it looks just about right. And then here we're going to pull the width out a little bit. Uh, we're going to choose this size, this as well. We're going to pull the width out here, uh, pull the width in here a little bit, and then finally pull the width out here. And that looks okay, I guess. Looks like we might have missed something here. Should have pulled this one out as well. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's get rid of this one by just selecting it, hitting the delete button, and then using this end cap to, to do. And again, because it's not exactly where we want it to be, our direct selection tool, we're going to select that point, click it twice, and then just physically move that point. And there it is. Don't forget to put the end caps on both of these. Just select both end caps. Uh, this one seems a little big, so let's go ahead and modify that uh, with our width tool, right? Because that seems like, oh, that's too big. There we go. And the same thing here uh, with the width tool, we can change that uh, as well. And then, oops, that's not what I want. Okay, and at this point, we just need to expand those elements. Since they're selected, I'm just going to hit expand. And then we're going to group all this stuff together just by selecting all of it and hitting the shape builder tool and just going across and making sure not to miss anything and there we go uh, at this point we just need to copy this and rotate it and paste it paste it paste it so let's just go ahead and do that and then we can move them into this formation manually so let's use the select tool just going to select it here or use the arrow keys to nudge if needed uh, i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste it and then I'm just going to go to the rotate tool and double click the rotate and rotate it 90 degrees and hit OK. Now I could have just copied it directly, but this was easy enough. So I'm just going to put that here for now. Obviously, this is just temporary. Uh, looks like it could be rotated even a little bit by hand here. This does not look like a perfect 90 degree rotation. OK, that looks pretty good, right? Okay, and then we're going to do that again. We're going to take this, copy it, paste it. Uh, we could even rotate it by hand here because these are all not going to be perfect. Let's go ahead and do that. Move this over. There we go. Looks good. And then finally, the last one, copy this one and paste it and then just rotate it uh, using the just a selection tool. We're not doing anything precise here. We, this is all by look. How does this look relative to the other ones? Trying to get everything to kind of align so that this opening and this opening are similar. So I'll just bring this down a little bit. Uh, the same with these, kind of looking at these two things, seeing how they, they interact. These guys look pretty aligned, right? And then the, these guys look pretty good. Okay, and that's how we're, that's our um, curved pen tool. Group this. And now you can kind of see that looks pretty good, right? We could have modified some other stuff, but this is how you would do some interesting complex curves or things, you know, that go along th this kind of an element. So, next tool we're going to learn is the pencil tool. And the pencil tool is located in your dock here. Uh, if you hit the N button, N as in Nancy, you'll get to the pencil tool. And the way the pencil tool works is really interesting. I'm just going to double click the pencil tool so you can see the dialog here. You can actually draw and then it can be more accurate or more smooth. I'm going to move this up to smooth a little bit. I'm also going to allow the option key to toggle a smooth tool. The smooth tool allows you to go in after the fact and smooth lines, which is always nice if you're using the pencil tool. 
and then uh, it closes paths when it when when they're within 15 p pixels so you can create a, f a finished path um, by or make it even more here anyway and the way it works is just I'm gonna I wish I had a Wacom tablet but I only have a mouse so I'm just gonna go here I'm just gonna go here I'm gonna go here here this looks pretty bad because it's a pretzel here here and then if I'm gonna finish off here and lo and behold this is how the pencil tool works now obviously we could use the direct selection tool to fix some of this stuff but watch what you can do with the pencil tool if you've made a mistake and this is too short you can actually start on the line and redraw and then end on the line and it redraws that tool that line so if I start here and then go to here Notice how it replaces this. Now you can, obviously that wouldn't work if you don't start on the line and end on the line. But if you start here and do this, you see you can modify it in that way. Or you can modify it using some of the other tools as well. And it's smooth like this because I set it up to be as smooth as possible. Um, if I wanted to smooth this out even more, obviously we can go to object or, um, yeah, object and then path simplify. And that would even that would allow us hitting the automatic here would simplify it even further. So maybe that's another thing you want to do. So now we've got our path. Uh, let's go ahead and give it um, uh, some a stroke, and let's increase that stroke to something like that. And then let's see if we can make it a little bit more curvy by going to path simplify. And let's see, even making it a little more simplified. That looks okay. Uh, if I go to my direct selection tool, you'll see that this path has very, very few uh, curves or few handles in it. And I can actually use these guys if needed to, to really just make it a little bit smoother, right? So this kind of could be smoother here. There we go. All right, so that's how we do this. And then finally, we'll just take this, select it, expand it. And it's now one solid shape, as you can kind of see. Ta-da, okay. That's the pencil tool. Again, the pencil tool is really nice because when you draw something, uh, by the way, if you draw something that's open like this, I'm just going to make the stroke so you can kind of see it. That's not a solid shape. If you do need to create a solid shape from this, select with a direct selection the, the endpoints you want to join and select Command J to join them. That'll put a line between them and make it a solid shape. Um, let's see, where would that be? It would probably be under uh, Object Path Join. So that'll be the command J. That's the tool you'll use to join this shape. And at that point, you can you have a solid shape. But again, the pencil tool is great because you, if you do make a mistake, you can always um, let's see, let's see, fix it like this, or fix it like that, or change your mind, or finish it like that. And then when you've got that, now it becomes a solid as well. Okay, that's the pencil tool. This tree would be a pain in the butt for anybody to to create, but you could use a pencil tool to, to create something like this. Um, but in this case, we're gonna be looking at the pencil tool and maybe the blob tool. Now, the pencil tool we know, so it just draws these paths. So maybe what you would do with the pencil tool is actually just grow, go, go down this area, right? And then maybe you would use the width tool to uh, make this tree have some uh, a look I don't know why this is happening there but let's we can fix that we can fix it um, with our direct selection tool after the fact here uh, once we've made it into a path it's because it's at an angle that this is happening there uh, but you get the idea you can always make this tree uh, look you can make this like smaller you can make this path bigger you get the idea and then you could do that with all the branches. But for this area, this shape, how would you actually construct something like this? Well, I guess you could use the pen tool and work your way around it. 
Um, but another possibility is something called the blob tool. Now the blob tool, the blob brush tool, uh, shift B is a little bit like the paintbrush tool, but what it does, it's kind of cool, is you'll notice that you get like a, a, a circle that you can change using the bracket keys, left bracket and right bracket over the return key. And the way it works is you're going to just draw and let go. And you'll see that that shape has everything that is black is already, it's kind of just makes an outline for you. So for instance, I'm going to go shift B to go to the blob tool make it smaller using the bracket key and I'm just going to to draw this tree like this and then you can kind of see how this is working right it's kind of like working by as if we're drawing now with this mouse it's not the easiest thing to do but a trackpad would be worse and you can see how this could draw the foliage for the tree. I'm just going to stop here for now so you can see what we've got. So this is what it looks like with the blob tool. Um, let's finish it off. Shift shift is in B. Shift B. Kind of go here. I should have deselected but that's okay. Just going to like blobby blob it. And then I'm just going to make the bracket key make it bigger because I don't feel like spending all day here. And you don't either. And then the same thing here. Kind of make this do this a little more quickly. And so if you have anything that's a little erratic or requires like some drawing skills or you just need to have uh, things be a little bit more like, you know, something that would be more difficult to trace or outline with the pen tool or the curvature tool and you could even do you know like this kind of stuff if you wanted to and you can see with the blob tool if you double click it it also has the ability to be more accurate and less smooth so for instance now you'll see that if I add the blob tool you see it, it actually kept some of that blobby element so maybe for the tree itself you want it to be a little bit rougher in which case turn the accuracy up and the smoothness down but if you want to have smooth lines then you can do that as well and you'll see that when we select this this would have been much more difficult to create with the blo with any other tool so the blob tool pencil tool uh, both of those give you the option of creating more complex shapes in a more organic way. So I'm going to let you finish this on your own. I think you get the idea here. Um, it could just be all blob tool, honestly, because kind of like the way this is working out. I'm going to hit the plus a couple times so that I could just kind of, there's a branch and then the shift, the, the, I'm just making the, the tool itself a little smaller using the bracket keys, right? And again, when you look at this as an object, you see that these are all one solid piece. Now, if they're not a solid piece, because you've got two different strokes here, remember to take this guy and expand it. And then use the Shape Builder tool to uh, bring these guys all together as one single object, right? And there we go. So. I'll let you finish the rest, but uh, here's what we've gotten so far, which is pretty close. Uh, and then fixing, obviously, some of the elements down here. Um, how would we erase this thing? Well, um, we're going to be using the eraser tool for the next uh, object, but let's go ahead and click on the eraser tool, Shift E. And you can see how the eraser tool works. It just erases. And it keeps the path intact. So, for instance, that could be something that you would want to erase. And so you get the idea how the eraser tool works just by looking how I destroy this tree. And we're going to use that on our next object. So that was the blob tool. Uh, here will be the eraser tool. So what we've got is this shape, which is a pretty easy shape to select. So we're going to use our rectangle tool. And we're just going to make a rectangle like that. We're going to use our curvature pen tool to pull this guy up and to pull this guy down. 
we know we want this to be coming to somewhat of a point, so we're going to do this, and then we're going to use our curvature tool again to pull these guys out. And lo and behold, we're almost there. I'm going to swap it, and what we're going to do is we're going to erase away just using our eraser tool. And notice that the eraser tool, just like the blob tool, has a circle, and if we use the brackets, we can make this bigger or smaller. And if we double-click the eraser tool, we also have the... Um, some some um, uh, ability to like do certain things to it so you can kind of see what we can do we can change the angle if we change the size here we could change uh, the angle of the tool now if it's a circle you really don't have an angle but if you make this like more like a calligraphy pen you can now change the angle and then when you draw it'll look more calligraphic but let's go ahead and just put this back to zero uh, and don't care about the rest of the stuff zero or, sorry, 100. There we go. And hit OK. And so we're going to make this a little bit smaller. And then we're just going to draw down this, this shape. So we're just going to take this, draw like this. And there's one. And then we're going to start here. And we're just going to pull up like that. Two. We're going to start here and pull up. That's three. And then uh, start here. Pull up. Oop, did undo that one. Maybe start from the outside, go to the inside, four, and then start from the outside, go to the inside, five. This would be a lot easier if I didn't have, I'm going to undo that because I didn't like that. If I didn't have a mouse, instead I had a Wacom tablet. There we go. So that's pretty close, as you can kind of see. And if I take, select this object and invert it, there is my shield. Group it all. And that's pretty much how that works. So that's the eraser tool. Obviously, we could have used curves and done a lot better job, but that's just like what we did. Okay, so looking at this one, there's one thing that I'd like to, to use to, in order to make this one. So this one just looks like a circle and uh, some wavy line shapes. Now, the wavy line shapes, an easy way to make a perfectly wavy line, because I guess we could use the curve tool, right, to kind of go here and then here and then here, and it would be about close, right? And we're like, okay, escape. You can kind of see that's pretty close, but it's not really perfect, right? So let's get rid of that. Let's just use a straight line. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool and starting here, and then hold the shift key down, go to there, hit the escape, and then now we have this object selected and we can see that what we want is to have it wiggle right now we've used this tool before in the past uh, on a circle to create like a medallion it's uh, object uh, path or sorry uh, effects distort and transform and we're going to use the zigzag and you'll notice that that's not exactly what we want, but it does have the ability here to smooth, which is pretty, it's getting to be exactly pretty close to what we want, right? Ridges per second segment, and let's try three. Oop, made it too big. And then bring the size down. Uh, and we see that this is kind of what we want. We'll just have to flip it upside down. In fact, let's put a negative here to see if that would do it. So no, it has to be um, it has to be in this direction. But it looks like that's what we're going to want. We want this to be go down here, up here, and then down and then up. So this is uh, let's see. I'm going to put this at three. That looks like the shape we want, right? So. Maybe even more like 2.5. Great. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to uh, flip this. And remember, in the properties area, we can flip things, um, let's see, uh, right here. Uh, so you can see you can flip them uh, upside, upside down or right side up. So, But before we do that, we have to expand this. Because right now, the effect is available for us to actually fix. You can see zigzag. We can go back and fix this if we wanted to. So for whatever reason, 2.5 got rid of it. OK. Um, so let's go ahead and object, expand the appearance of that. Now it's an actual stroke. As you can see, you can see the stroke. 
Now when we flip it up and down, it'll flip the correct way. I'm just going to move this with the arrow keys. And then I'm going to increase the stroke. Very good, like that. And then what I'm going to do, this is a stroke of five, so I'm going to remember that when we make the circle. Uh, I'm going to expand this one more time so that this becomes an outline. And I'm going to hold the option key and drag until I'm happy and let go. And because I dragged with the option key, I'm going to duplicate what I did. So Command D and do that several times until we're at the bottom here. Finally, I'm going to create a circle. Holding the shift key down to get it to be a perfect circle. And I'm going to change that to outline. Scooch it into place. And now I'm going to make the stroke 5, just like we did with the other things. Uh, select everything at this point, and we're just, we, f oh, we have to expand the circle. Finally, select everything, and then use our Shape Builder tool. Holding the Option key, I could get rid of all these guys. Get rid of all these guys. And then let going, letting go of the Option key will allow me to get all these things to be one object. And don't forget the other side as well. And there is our finished... Uh, object uh, and again we used the zigzag tool but to make soft waves this time instead of hard zigzags and remember if I hit command Y I'm seeing this shape the way it's supposed to be cut out which is what I'm looking for right and there's a little thing right there and that would be something I would pick up uh, so be careful when you're when you're doing this I'm just going to use a direct select select it hit the delete button twice so got rid of that little piece little tether there so keep an eye on things if you see it you should remove it all right i'm going to command y to get back the last two uh, i'm going to let you do i think uh the pen the, the curvature uh, pen tool would be what i would use to to create these the way i would kind of work on this panda bear and i'm just going to do it is and you can do it on your own but probably start with one eye and then flip it around I'd start on one ear flip it probably do the nose um, like one side and then the other I'd flip that and then put them together the mouth looks like a just a little like curve here and then the rest of these would just be outlined with the pen pen tool I'm not going to need the copyright symbol so I'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe try to fast forward this part so that you can see what I'm doing but I can see right away that these kind of are like oval shapes like this right except they're kind of like rotated so um, what I'll do is I'll start with the oval simple shape rotate it and get it to look a little bit like the ear right and then what I'm going to use is the curvature pen tool and I'm just going to bring uh, this guy in uh, add a curve here bring this guy in add another curve like out here and kind of like the, I'm look, liking what I'm seeing here and again this is the curvature pen tool so boom I have one ear down I'm going to copy it and paste it and I'm going to flip this so that using the properties here I'm going to flip it here and then put that one here rotate it so it's pretty pretty much correct and I know if I select both of these and just flip them boom I've got the ears done same thing with the eyes I'm going to just start with like an ellipse, rotate it into place, get it kind of close, right? A little bit bigger. And now just kind of going in, I'm going to use the pen tool, the curvature pen tool, and add a little bit of thing here, a little here. Now here, this is supposed to come to a point, so double clicking that will make this like a solid shape, you see? So I'm going to move this guy in here, and move this guy uh, way over here. And maybe add another path here so that this becomes a little less. There we go. Maybe change that here. So you can kind of see how I'm using this curvature pen tool to sculpt this object here. Pretty happy with that. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. And then flip it again. And then move it to the other side. And rotate it as needed. 
again using the direct or the selection tool and then just select both of these guys and flip them boom we're pretty close here um, looks just like I'm just gonna do the whole oval thing again uh, modify this by rotating it slightly because it looks like it is right around there use the select uh, selection tool V for select um, I'm going to use the curvature pen tool and make this uh, something like that so that's a nice point and then pull these up here okay and I'm pretty I'm kind of okay with that I got like maybe a little bit of like something going on here maybe that also there we go looks pretty good now maybe I want this to be rounded and I can do that remember I could just go to my direct select and what you you should notice right here there's this little thing that allows you to pull that in and that's with the direct select tool okay I'm gonna invert that so that's how it looks and I'm pretty happy with that as well uh, so the last thing here is just a curve so I'm just gonna use a curvature tool the curvature pen tool and just create I'm gonna swap over here and swap so I can see what I'm doing um, gonna just make that here that looks okay I'm gonna swap this and now this does I don't want this to be black but again I'll be filling this in with uh, I'll be using the path shape builder tool to get rid of that but if I wanted for now just to make it white so that it doesn't distract me I can do that and then what I'm going to do is go around the entire um, panda at this point and just using the, cur the curved pen tool, start right here, kind of work my way around. I'm using the spacebar key. Uh, I'm going to swap this and make sure that this is black so that I can see what I'm doing. And just if, if the curve is tight, I'm putting the, the things closer together. If the curve is not tight, then I'm going further away so that's kind of like how I'm doing it but if it's too close together they get wonky so try not to do that at the point where I need to change direction I double click right and you know how to do that and then start again holding the space bar down the move I'm just kind of going around I know that I can fix this later there seems to be something happening here so I'm just gonna start again Double click to get a hard a hard point there. Space bar to allow me to pan. Double click here. Okay. Okay, that was a mistake. I just want to kind of move that here, and I want to move that here. I can do that while I have the pen tool selected. I'm going to overlap here. Double click. Double click, and then start here. Just put a couple pieces in here. Things get a little tighter here, so I'm just gonna make more points. Double click here. And finish the path. So, how does that path look? Let's zoom out. Pretty happy with that. I'm gonna invert it, see what it looks like. And obviously, the mouth is there. I'm gonna take the mouth and bring it to the front or I'm going to send this path to the back. It's easier because I couldn't select that. And that is our panda. So let's just finish it off by making all this a single object using the Pathfinder tool and taking the option key and holding this down to get rid of this. And now this path is one path. I'm going to group everything, Command G, and there is my panda. And then finally, this uh, I'm going to work with the pen tool in the same fashion here. Um, and maybe the width tool, because right here, I could totally see myself just creating like this oval. And then using the variable width tool to um, make this more interesting. see what's going on here 
There we go. And then up here, the width gets smaller. Up here, the width gets a little wider. Here, the width gets smaller. Oop, let's use our path that we have there. Here, the width gets smaller. And I'll fix the location for this path uh, with the direct select tool. Let's see how that's looking. That's looking pretty good. So direct select. And that allows me to take these points and just move them where they need to be. I can bring this out a little bit. Bring this handle out. Same thing here. Bring this handle out. Bring this handle out. And the same up here up and up and that's a good place to start that's our outline and again we want to expand that and now we have our outline we're just going to invert that so that we can see what we're doing looking good okay so the outline for the uh, object here we could use a pen tool or we could try to use a curvature pen tool seeing how we're we're on a roll with the curve pen tool Again, when you get really to areas like this, you kind of want to add a lot more double clicking here, changes direction, zooming out, command minus minus a couple times. So we see where we're going. I can make these feet after the fact, so I'm just kind of going to do this because this will be easier for me to just ignore the feet for now and just kind of just get the main body made again the less points you have the more beautiful it looks like when I zoom in here let's move that like here move this guy here I think I might have made too many oh that looks better Like I don't want to have to go in after the fact. If I can fix it at this point, that would be really nice. Double click that, double click that, and then finish it there. So that's our main uh, outline. Obviously we can do some ovals here. Uh, again, the, pen, the, the curvature pen tool, so that'll allow us to move this around. So we've got the shape that we want. Again, that's only four anchor points. Do the same thing for the interior eye. Start with that and then kind of moving these guys to make it look. There we go. And then finally, the last shape will be this one. We could just actually draw that. It's almost the last shape, actually. I'm just going to put one here here and here and then finally connect obviously we can move these points after the fact to get them to be a little more I'm using the curved pen tool again for all this because everything was soft I didn't see any hard lines and then the last thing we need and this one looks like it'll be fairly easy so we'll just start And so let's bring this down. This one, here. and then let's add an extra point right here because it just kind of needs it. Let's see. Zoom this guy in here. That can go there. That can go here. Just kind of. And then finally, the only thing left are our little feet. Uh, again, don't start on the path. Start off a path so that it doesn't. And then we finish. And I'm wondering if I could just copy that shape and paste it and then flip it and then put that here. Is that the same shape? 
No. So I'm going to just delete that and just do it by hand since we are trying to copy this. So again, don't start on a line. And finish it off there. And then move these as needed to get them to be correct. And there doesn't look like there's any pointy elements, but this one could be. Let's see. I'm going to select this path. That one. I'm going to hit the minus button and get rid of that. I didn't want that extra piece right there. So the minus button allows us to, you know, remove points if you remember. Okay. Let's just put it all together. So uh, let's select all of it here. Um, I'm going to change the outline to solid. And I'm just going to use the Shape Builder tool to select, remove this. So Shape Builder, hold the Option key down, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. And then put these feet together. And that is that. Let's zoom out, select it, group it, go select all of it, including the eye, group it, move it off to the side, and that is our penguin. And that is hopefully helpful. Uh, some of the nice tools and some of the effects that we used will hopefully help you with your designs as well. And getting used to this new pen tool, the curved pen tool, shows you how you can create some really nice curvature stuff um, using that. Okay, thanks so much for watching.